Hello everybody and welcome back to Forest River. So, we have finished up all of our lime spreading and got that finished. Uh, we cleaned up the spreader and the 8400. Um, we got the 8400 hooked up to the planner now and we've got the uh, versatile hooked up to our air seeder. As you can see, the um, headers are no longer here. If we pop over, oh, okay, let's do it this way. Um, here we go. All right, so if we pop over here, so we did get this yard uh, rented. So we do have access to these two bins and room to put more. And we also have access to this shed. So we laid down a little bit of gravel going around here and cut back some trees. And now we have all three of our headers stored in this building. So we can uh, use it for our storage now. Um, I've got our liquid fertilizer truck sitting here. That is full, as is our fertilizer truck. So we are going to get the air seeder filled up. And uh, we're going to go seed some oats. So first things first, we're going to jump in this truck and uh, get fertilizer loaded into the drill. Um, and then I did also pick up uh, a loader for our um, 4855 as well as got that done up. Uh, we did have Green Star added to it as well. Um, I do plan on using that on our sprayer this year. Okay, maybe fill unit one is for seed. Let's take a look here. So, uh, if we take a look in the shed here, so you can see we do have eight hefty seed boxes as well as eight pallets of seed. So we have stuff for, should have plenty for both the drill and the planner. So we're going to go ahead and come in here and uh, we're going to grab us a box and see if we can uh, get some seed put in that air seeder. Definitely a little heavy on this uh, skid steer here. That's all right. Okay, and why is that going in? Okay, well that's odd. Okay, and there we go. So we did have it on the wrong spot.
Okay. So then we're going to set our empties over here for now. Because we can take these back to Hefty later on. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. And I guess, actually, now that I think about it, I think these boxes can attach right to the skid steers. Let's give that a test quick. I think I had seen that that was a new ability yes it is okay perfect so we can just do it this way for our pro boxes Take a look here and see how full we are. Might take uh, three or four boxes to get it filled up. So I will go ahead and uh, I'll get it filled up and we'll come back when we're in the field. Alrighty, and we are just about to turn in to our first oat field. So let's get her spun around here and unfolded. So we'll let it unfold here. Perfect. All right, let's get spun around and we're gonna work on some headlands here first. And before we do that, we do have GPS set up on this. So we're going to get this all set up. SDX 30 drill. Save that. Perfect. All right, and let's drop her down, turn it on, and uh, get to seating. So I think. Um, We'll get these done, these two oats fields done first, and then we're going to um, probably start seeding our sunflowers right away. And then uh, while we do that, we'll uh, hire out the uh, rolling. Now that uh, we do have a farmhand, uh, he was going to be here earlier today, and uh, give you guys the chance to meet him, but he had some stuff come up in town this morning, so he was not able to take over on um, spreading, which is perfectly okay. Um, we got it done anyways, so, then, uh, we were still able to 
get everything else set up and ready to go and we're only coming up on noon so that is uh, perfectly alright things happen so we're going to do one more pass along here should have plenty of turning room. We might end up skipping rows, but uh, we'll make, make her work. Head on down here. And then we'll do our headlands on the other field. And then uh, jump back into it. Or jump into our up and down passes and get this uh, knocked out. So I did dump four boxes into our air cart there behind us and uh, we were able to get it just about full. It actually filled it to 90 percent so not completely full but I figured instead of cracking another box open we would just uh, leave it at that. And then uh, when we fill the planter, we'll probably dig into our uh, seed bags that we have. So be able to get everything filled up and uh, good to go. Adjust our GPS line there a little bit for once we finish up our headlands. I did consider using an old flexicoil drill, but the one that I have is a little big for our current uh, setup, so because nothing would be better behind an old versatile four-wheel drive like this than a old-school flexicoil. But this setup actually works pretty well, so... I think we'll uh, run with this one for a season or two and then look into upgrading again later on. headland pass here. We'll get this knocked out. Off we go. Perfect. 
So we are using a fair amount of fertilizer. There's a decent amount going down. So that is good. Hopefully we'll have decent looking yields. Which I'm not really too worried about the yield on this. Uh, just because we're mainly doing the oats for straw. Granted, we do have other ways of getting straw um, off of things such as our corn or soybeans, but uh, we want to keep a little bit of a variety of straw, so why not uh, throw a little bit of oats in at least, and we have some oat straw, we can have some soybean straw, as well as corn stalks. So, have a little bit of a variety of things. And then, uh, once we hit April and finish up our first round pass of um, spraying herbicide, then we're going to jump right into making some hay and uh, getting some cow feed stocked up. Then we will be set and ready to buy some cattle at the end of this year. Which is the goal. Hopefully we'll be able to afford it. Um, well, we'll have no problems affording it because we're going to buy those cattle after we... Uh, sell off our grain this winter so by then we should be all stocked up and uh, stocked up on feed and have a bunch of bales ground up and silage ready to go and then uh, we can very easily provide for our cows once we get them. It's kind of my goal. That's why I don't that's why I haven't bought cows already. Uh, for anybody wondering, I normally like to buy all the equipment um, the first year, spend that year um, getting feed um, you know, getting a stockpile of it. And then after that first year, then I buy the uh, cows. Otherwise, we'd be buying a bunch of feed. And that's a lot of extra money that we'd have to be spending every single, well, every couple of days. And uh, we don't really need that extra expense right now. We got enough expenses uh, making our payments on equipment, our loan, our land, and uh, of course, you know, we have hired help now, so we got to pay him. And fuel, maintenance, all that, we just, we don't need any extra things tacked on, so... Um, we're just kind of going to keep things as low as we can in terms of spending. Uh, we've, of course, we have spent, oh, probably close to 900000 since uh, December. But all of that was kind of necessary. Um... I mean, yes, we probably could have gone through the year on the equipment that we had and just picked up a few items for uh, making hay and then waited on the items for feeding. But in the end, we'd have to be doing it anyways, and we had the money, so why not do it? And uh, 
we did save a lot of money. We wouldn't have half of the machinery that we do right now if it wasn't for the uh, new leasing program that uh, they're offering at the dealership. So, if it wasn't for that, we definitely, we would probably be uh, waiting another year to get into cows even. But thankfully, they are offering that program and uh, that really helped us out in getting the larger machinery to make things more efficient in terms of the farming and also to get the equipment to be able to uh, run these cows like we plan so it'll all work out in the end just gonna be a lot of payments and a lot of debt for a little while here but it'll be alright it'll make uh, It'll work itself out in the end. It does kind of suck not having grandpa and grandma living at the farm anymore. But uh, I understand. I know they wanted to uh, be closer to town. And I mean, not that we're super far uh, to begin with. But they wanted to be in town where things are easier. And... Uh, they knew that we were making a bunch of changes to the yard and they didn't want to feel in the way I guess is the way that grandma put it uh, even though I told them that they wouldn't be but what uh, more could I do I guess I even offered to build a bigger house and just have them stay with me but they wanted to move into town oh boy they wanted to move into town be closer to things and uh, live life a little while they can so I understand that and uh, I'm glad that they were able to make that happen like they wanted and it was nice having that extra room uh, to where we could put up the bale buildings where we did granted we could have just kept building out into the field there at home but this way I guess also works So we're over half done here on uh, this first field, which is great. Definitely a large step up from uh, the old box drill that we started farming with. I don't think it's any wider than uh, the Great Plains that we were using, but this just kind of makes a little more sense. Um, everything else is upgrading and updating, and uh, we did get a pretty good deal on this setup anyways, so I guess we can't... Uh, can't really pass that up. In the next year or two, I would like to go a little bigger. Um, I did see when we were picking this one up, um, they did have a much newer John Deere air seeder, but uh, it was a N540 um, with a 550 cart behind it 
and uh, it was a very nice setup a lot more capacity for seed and fertilizer in it and an extra 10 feet over what we currently have so that would have been nice too but it came with a very hefty price tag and that drill needed a lot more power on it than uh, this one does and so that would have meant needing a bigger tractor and that meant a bigger price tag and bigger payments on it so we just decided we'll settle with this setup for now and run the old versatile on it and it's working out great uh, it's actually a really good setup so nothing wrong with that it works out uh, really well so we only got uh, three more passes here to go and uh, we'll have this field wrapped up definitely uh, helps being able to put the fertilizer down in one pass um, over the old grain drill that we had that made for a lot of extra passes over the field and a lot more compaction so this is gonna help us out a lot in the long run uh, we could have could have taken in that Great Plains drill and had a bunch of work done and added the ability for fertilizer but that was uh, extra cost into a machine that wasn't gonna hang around forever whereas uh, this one already had the ability and granted this one isn't gonna stay around forever either uh, if we can keep expanding but this one we didn't have to put the extra money into it we did have to put a little bit of extra money and work into it um, I mean this was a used drill this wasn't new by any means uh, nothing that we picked up was new but um, it uh, all the discs were shot and it had a couple of hoses that were a couple of hydraulic hoses that were starting to get a little war from rubbing on the frame a couple of the seed and fertilizer tubes were a little wore out so we had to put some new hoses on those and uh, we had a few bearings that were weren't out yet but they were definitely on the way so we did have to stick a little bit of time and money into it. A lot of time in the shop. But uh, it all paid off. This thing is working amazingly well. So no complaints there. And there we have it. There is our first field of oats seeded, so we'll mark all this down. We're on whoops, 26. Current is oats. And seeded with fertilizer. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna go get the next field opened up and started. And uh, then when we come back, we'll get that field done and 
we'll see we might even get uh, the planner loaded up and ready to go so that's gonna do it for today folks if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that thumbs up button and as always thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one